Hello, welcome to the Ace Destroyer and welcome to a special May 1940 video. Today we will take a closer look at the legendary Battle of Bourdange, in which the 5th Company of the 1st Chasseurs Ardennais managed to keep the German 1st Panzer Division at bay for nearly the entirety of the opening day of the German May 1940 offensive in the West. The sector of Bourdange was defended by the members of the 2nd Battalion of the 1st Regiment of Chasseurs Ardennais. This regiment was deployed along the Belgian-Luxembourg border and it was dangerously outstretched. The regiment was forced to only cover the most vital positions along the border. At the same time observation posts were set up. These posts had to make contact with the main defences as soon as the Germans entered Belgian soil. So that the Belgian forces could blow up the bridges over the river Sur. The regimental command post of the 1st Chasseurs Ardennais was located at Neuf Chateau. The 2nd Battalion under the command of Major Argon was in the centre of the line with its battalion headquarters at Fauvillé. The 5th Company was located at Stinchon and Baudange. The unit also received two T-13 tank destroyers, one at each place. The 4th Company defended Radelange and Martelange. They too received two T-13s. The 6th Company was further to the southwest at Habet to cover the southern flank of the Ardennes. To the right of the 2nd Battalion were the 1st and 9th Companies at Arlon. They were to retreat towards Habert as soon as the demolition crews had completed their work in the city. To the left of the 2nd Battalion was the 1st Battalion. Their line stretched to just south of Bastogne. The 5th Company was deployed as follows. The 1st Platoon of Soulit non emery was positioned at Stinchon together with a machine gun section and the T-13 tank destroyer of Sergent Dupont. At Baudange was the staff of the 5th Company, the 3rd platoon of Lieutenant Hautefen, a machine gun section and a T-13 under Sergent Origé. Also the 2nd platoon under Sous-Lieutenant Dauquier was at Baudange, apart from the section under Sergent Renault which was at Wiesenbach. By 4am on the 10th of May 1940 all bridges around Baudange were destroyed. All along the border bridges were destroyed to slow down the German advance. By 8am the command post of Capitaine Commandant Maurice Bricard in command of the 5th Company received news of the presence of German Fallschirmjägers between Fauvillet and Baudange. Therefore Capitaine Bricard sent out his only T-13, the one of Sergent Origé to Fauvillet, to participate in an anti-Fallschirmjäger patrol. These German paratroopers were in fact members of the 3rd Battalion Cross Deutschland Regiment who were participating in Operation Nivi. The Cross Deutschland Battalion was to clear a path behind the Belgian lines, cut telephone lines and prevent reinforcements from coming up to the front lines. However, despite the Germans being able to complete their objectives, their mission kind of backfired on the advance of the 1st and 2nd Panzer Divisionen, which were to cut across the Luxembourg and Belgian Ardennes. Rather than support them, they ended up causing them unnecessary casualties. Because the Nivy operation had cut the Belgian telephone lines, the units of the 1st Chasseurs Ardennais didn't receive the orders to withdraw. Without these orders, the Chasseurs Ardennais kept fighting, causing considerable problems to the German 1st and 2nd Panzer Divisions. The first action at Baudange occurred at 10am, when a German plane fired close to the position of the 5th Company's adjutant at Jutan Vlauberge. The Belgians fired back, which made the plane fly away. In the meantime, the situation of the section of the 2nd platoon under the command of Sergent Renault was getting precarious. The Germans, most likely from the 3rd Battalion Schützen Regiment 1, were closing in on his position from the north. While at the same time, the Germans also came from the valley, from the direction of Martelange, which had been abandoned by the 4th Company a few hours earlier. Renault's position became even more dangerous when several Germans of the Grad Schützen Bataillon 1 were spotted in the forest to the southwest. Sergent Renault quickly sent a runner to Baudange to ask for orders. The telephone lines had been cut after the bridge was blown, therefore Renault could only rely on runners. He received orders to pull back towards Baudange to link up with the rest of the 2nd platoon. Renault's men mounted their bicycles and headed for Baudange. Luckily for the Chasseurs Ardennais, their movements went unnoticed by the Germans. With the arrival of Renault, the Baudange defences increased with 15 men and 2 machine guns. Wiesenbach fell into German hands at 11.30 am, according to a statement by General Leutnant Friedrich Kirchner in command of the 1st Panzer Division. Radelange was reported captured 10 minutes later. 
The next village on the route of march of the 1st Panzer Division was Bodange. One of the major advantages the Chasseurs Ardennais had over the Germans was their knowledge of the area. A few members of the 5th Company grew up in the area of Bodange and knew the place through and through. Adjudant Flauberge was such a man. He set up the defences in the best way possible, waiting for the Germans to arrive. The 3rd platoon of Lieutenant Autrenne was relocated to the houses in the centre, which offered greater protection and better fields of fire. The relocation of the platoon happened just in time, for the Germans had arrived at the outskirts of the village. The battle for Bodange had commenced. On the hill called Stein, the second platoon of Sous-Lieutenant Dockier opened fire on the Germans across the Sure River. The Germans of the Schützenregiment 1 found themselves fired upon by seven machine guns, and their attack quickly ground to a halt with several casualties. The attack quickly spread to the northern part of the village. The Germans on Heid Fjelds opened fire on Otfen's platoon in the houses below. Around that time, a Belgian motorcyclist arrived from Fauvillers with two things. The first was the orders of Major Argon, in command of the second platoon, to hold the positions at Bodange. The second, perhaps surprising, was a delicious jambon d'Ardenne from a local butcher. In the south, the situation was deteriorating, despite the heavy fire coming from Dockier's guns. The Germans of the Kratschutzen Bataillon 1 managed to get ever closer. Sergeant Renault on the extreme right flank of the platoon tried to make contact with his platoon commander by sending out Caporal Folmont. When Folmont didn't return, Renault himself went over to see his platoon commander. But Sous-Lieutenant Paul Dockier had been killed in action. The Germans overwhelmed the positions of the second platoon. Soldats Stahl and Bourgeois were captured when reloading their machine gun. The survivors of the second platoon retreated back towards the mill where they had left their bicycles. During the retreat, soldats Leon Mangan and Robert Simon were killed. At 2 pm, a group of German motorcyclists coming from Varnach were seen heading towards Bodange. The Chasseurs Ardennais held their fire until the motorcyclist entered a bend in the road. The motorcyclists quickly dispersed and were forced to abandon their bikes. However, the motorbikes were followed by three armoured cars. As the only T-13 tank destroyer defending the village was sent elsewhere, the chasseurs had no proper means to defend themselves from this newly emerged threat. Otven quickly ordered one of his machine gun sections to open fire on the trucks that were following the armoured cars. These were quickly dealt with, and at that moment, one of the armoured cars drove into an anti-tank ditch on the side of the road. The two others that followed immediately thought they had encountered a minefield and stopped their advance. Apart from the occasional suppressive fire, they had no further involvement in the battle for Bodange. By 2.45pm, Otven received a message from Capitaine Bricard stating that the latter still hadn't received orders to pull back. He also asked Otven whether or not he could hold on for a few more hours and if he needed some more ammunition. Otven quickly sent the runner back stating that he could hold the village for a few more hours, but that he was in dire need of ammunition. However, Otven's platoon would never receive the ammunition which they so desperately needed. With Sulit non Dokuir's platoon out of action, they were cut off from the company's headquarters. Capitaine Commandant Bricard wanted to see the situation at the Stein Hill for himself, but he received a wound in the breast area. Bricard decided to fall back with a few men in his immediate surroundings to Tracpois, a very small hamlet between Fauvillers and Bodange. Unaware of this retreat, Otven fought on. A little while later, the German artillery entered the fray. At 4 pm, Capitaine Bricard sent his final message to battalion headquarters. Somme sous le feu de l'artillerie! which translates as, we are under artillery fire. Most of the rounds were fired at the 3rd platoon, which was still fighting from the houses in the town centre. The Ardennes houses were built from strong and thick walls of stone and could, fortunately for the defenders, withstand most of the shells. Sergeant Cousin Bourguer, in command of the machine gun section, tried to reach the top of the hill towards Hot, but his section found itself fired upon, resulting in two men wounded. The main street was enfiladed by the Germans firing from Hillfields. Inside the village, the Chasseurs Ardennais were forced to resupply each other by throwing ammunition across the street. By then, the Germans to the south had managed to close in on the defenders. 
Soldat Jules Thierry, who was guarding the bicycles, was hit in the head and died on the spot. By 5pm, Otfen and his platoon had run out of ammunition. Measures were taken to start the withdrawal. Having conserved the last few rounds of ammunition, Otfen and Vlouberge made the platoon ready to withdraw. But with the Germans entering the main street, one last firefight broke out. Otfen burnt all his documents and raised the white flag. The Germans who captured Otfen and the rest of his platoon were shocked. For the course of the entire afternoon, they had been fighting one single platoon of chasseurs ardennais. Eventually, 26 chasseurs were captured inside the town. With the fighting having died down inside Bodange, Capitaine Bricard sent out Sergeant Major Janssens to see where the Bodange had fallen. Janssens quickly signaled the advance of the Germans. Bricard ordered the retreat of his unit, but they quickly fell under heavy machine gun fire coming from the hill to the south. Bricard was killed in action. He had been hit in the head right under his left eye. Also, soldats Meuse and Weiss were killed by the machine gun bullets. Their bodies were buried three days later by a local. The battle for Bodange was finally over. For almost the entirety of the day, the German 1st Panzer Division had fought for the possession of the village. But the 5th Company of Chasseurs Ardennais stood in their way, and they fought for every inch of the village, knowing that behind them lay their country. It was only by 8.15pm that the roads around Bodange were open and the 1st Panzer Division could advance once more. Their objective of the day in the Chateau was still 20 kilometers to the west. Capitaine Bricard and his men had held back the 1st Panzer Division for almost a full day, spoiling the plans of General Leutnant Kirchner. The 5th Company, 1st Regiment Chasseurs Ardennais had 11 men killed and 20 other wounded. The rest was captured by the Germans. The 1st Panzer Division's casualties were estimated at around 100. Sergeant Talbot was captured close to where Capitaine Bricard had fallen. A German officer who passed by made inquiries about the dead Belgian officer at his feet. Talbot simply remarked that it was the body of Capitaine Bricard, the commander of the 5th Company. The young German officer promptly saluted the lifeless remains of the 46-year-old company commander. Bricard and his men had gained the respect of their German enemy. This was the Ace Destroyer. I hope you enjoyed this special episode about the Battle of Belgium. If you did, don't forget to like and subscribe and do leave a comment down below. I hope to see you in the next one.